Hey guys, welcome back. This is Bruno from the BTN HD, and today we're going to go over a little bit of uh, VMware and Windows Server. So right now, what's my environment? Or what are we actually doing? So we are actually adding a network file system within a VMware hypervisor. Now the hypervisor that I have within my environment is the, the latest and greatest, which is version 6. And I am running a Windows Server 2012 R2. I installed the vSphere clients to log into my hypervisor. And what we want to do is go inside configuration. And we want to go into storage. And we're going to click on add. And here we have two storage types. We have either a disk or LUN, which is an iSCSI fiber channel connection, or a network file system, which we're going to do together. So my windows server 2012 r2 is an active directory a domain fully domain within server 2012 r2 by default you're going to get the file services installed that's automatically installed for you but you need to go inside the server manager and uh check that nfs row to install it so we're going to do that together and i have my notes right here and I'm going to place that stuff at my website and place the link at the bottom of the description. So we're going to open up our server manager and we're going to go to manage. We're going to click on add roles and features. We're going to click on next, next, another next. Then we're going to go inside the file and storage services. You're going to click on the arrow. We're going to click on the file and iSCSI services. Click on that. And we want to locate this one, server for NFS. Okay, click on that. Uh, it's going to want you to add additional features. Just click add features. We're going to click on next. And then from here, we don't need anything else. And we're going to click on next. And we're going to install. All right, so our installation for the network file system is successful. That is always a good thing. We're going to close this up. And I'm going to mix it up a little bit. I normally use the server manager to do all my installations. I'm going to use a little PowerShell. So we need to install the identity management for Unix. Okay, because remember the hypervisor VMware is Unix based. So we're going to right click on our PowerShell and we're going to right click on Windows PowerShell and we're going to run it as an administrator. And then from here, we are going to type in three commands. Uh, each of these commands is going to want you to restart. Uh, the first two hit no, and the second one is when we're going to actually restart the machine. So the first command is going to be the following. So what we're going to do is dism.exe. We're going to do an online attribute. We're going to do an, an enable feature attribute. Uh, and another attribute of feature name. And we're going to do a colon. And the first feature that we're going to actually install is... And the first feature is going to be admin UI and forward slash all. Hit enter. From here, I'm going to say N for no because I don't want to restart it. I'm going to hit the arrow key up once. And we're just going to delete everything where the colon is at. And the other one is going to be NIS space forward slash all. Hit enter. Again, we're going to hit no. And hit the arrow key one more time up and we're going to delete everything up to the point with a colon because everything is the same. The only thing that's changing is the features name. And the last one is psync for slash all. And we're going to hit enter. So you're probably saying, what are these things? So when we go to Active Directory and let's click on Administrator. Uh, these three features that we are installing, which is the identity management uh, for Unix, it's going to give you another tab. It's going to give you a Unix uh, attribute tab, and that's what we want because we need to continue to configure an NFS uh, network share for our VMware hypervisor. So I'm going to cancel this, and I'm going to close this up. And I'm going to actually close my server management up and I'm going to hit yes because I want the machine to restart. Okay, our machine is rebooted. Awesome. We're going to log in into our machine so we can continue our configuration of our NFS to uh, actually hook it up inside our VMware hypervisor. So once you're inside your Windows desktop, we want to locate uh, our Active Directory users and computer uh, application. And then from here, I am going to create a group. So let's right click and let's create new. And we want to create a new group. Now this group could be anything you want. I'm going to make it, uh, let's say Unix 
users. You can leave the group scope and the group type the default. You don't have to change it. We're going to click on OK. Awesome. So the next thing that we need to do inside that group is right click on it and we go to properties. And you're going to see a new tab, which is Unix attributes. And within our Unix attributes, these are the things that we need to do. Now, for our NIS domain, we need to hit the drop down and pick our domain, your domain, right? My domain is btnhd.edu. Now, the GID group, I'm going to set it to zero. Okay, from here, we are going to apply and we need to add a member. I'm going to add the administrative account. So let's go to the member section. Let's click on add and we're going to go admin. And we're going to check the name. Awesome. And we're going to press OK and apply it. And then we're going to click OK. Now, the next thing that we need to do is the administrative account. Remember, we gave the admin access to this group, which has Unix attributes. So we're going to right click on the administrative account, go to properties. Again, you guys don't have to do the administrative account. You probably have something else. We need to go into the Unix attributes. Again, the NIS domain should be your domain. Click on your domain. Uh, the UID, I'm going to set it to zero. And again, the primary group name automatically is going to say the Unix users. Again, that's the name of the group that I gave it. Whatever group you guys provide it, you're going to see it on that drop down. And uh, make sure I hit zero. There it goes. And we're going to click apply. And we're going to do OK. The next thing that we need to do is locate our network file system uh application within our server 2012 so i'm going to close the active directory because we don't have to do anything else we're going to click on start and we're going to go to the little uh the little arrow to show all our apps and we want to locate our services for network file systems we're going to click on that i'm going to double click on this window to expand it and what we need to do is right click on the primary node of our network file system uh, application so i'm going to right click and we want to go to properties now what we need to do is enable Active Directory domain name. Now you need to give it the the fully qualified name. It's going to be bj-nfs because that's where our network file system is stored and .btnhd.edu. That is the fully qualified domain, okay? We're going to click on apply and we're going to okay this now next thing that we need to do is create a folder so i'm going to close this up and i'm going to drop the folder inside our c drive again most likely you have a partition or you have a server that you're doing this you have like a raid configuration or whatever so i'm going to drop this folder inside our c drive and i'm going to right click and go to new and folder i'm going to call this nfs right that's pretty simple we're going to right click on this folder and we're going to go to properties from here we want to go inside the nfs sharing uh, tab and we want to click on manage nfs sharing click on that you want to enable share this folder you want to leave the defaults as minus two and minus two on the uid as well as the gid just leave it as is then we need to go into permissions and from permissions we want to click on the drop down for the type of access we want to read and write and make sure you check off allowed root access and we're going to click OK we're going to apply it OK it and before I even close it I want you guys to look at the folder because the folder is going to change a little bit and make sure look at this path right here the network path is going to be this this path is going to be used for our Linux environment so keep in mind that and we're going to close it and if I refresh this window right now it's going to change awesome the next thing that we need to do is log into our uh, hypervisor I'm going to double click on our VMware client so I can log in and uh, do root for now log in there you go okay so I'm gonna double click on this window I'm gonna press OK because it's the eval mode It's always good to, to test this stuff out okay so once we're inside our hypervisor uh, we need to configure a V kernel uh, because NFS is not going to work without a V kernel configuration within, within your networking uh, so we're gonna go inside configuration and we're going to go to networking and right here we're going to add a networking from here we're going to do a v kernel uh, again the v kernel tcp ip stack handles traffic for the following esxi services vmotion uh, iSCSI, nfs is what we need and we're going to click on next uh create a vsphere standard switch we're going to do that give this a physical let's give it a physical one uh next 
excellent and we're going to click on next we're going to obtain an IP setting automatically we going to and click next and we're going to finish okay awesome so right now that's completed and what we're going to do is we're going to go inside our storage and within storage we're going to add a storage we're going to go to our network file system and click on next so the folder would be nfs and for the data store name i'm going to give it vms there it goes and we're going to click on next and we're going to click on finish I'm going to expand this to see and it looks like if it installed completed awesome there it goes how awesome is that awesome so our nfs is configured with no problem i can actually right click on it and i can browse it uh so to test this out let's minimize our you know our client uh, i'm going to exit out of this command prompt let's go inside our folder and let's say let's create a uh, folder say hello guys and let's go inside this folder and create a text file and let's call it uh, YouTube BTNHD cool so if everything works well we should see that folder as well as that text file within our uh, hypervisor infrastructure right so let's go inside our client and I'm going to just uh, refresh let's do a quick refresh Right, refresh awesome right click we're gonna browse our database there goes our folder we double click on that folder and there goes our text file awesome so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video on how to uh, hook up a NFS system within your hypervisor infrastructure uh, leave comments right below don't forget about hitting that like button because it does support the video and I catch you guys on the next one peace out